Well, it's the Sunday lunchtime coronavirus news update from the sleepy little town of Azur in the southwest of France. Basically, don't panic. There's nothing to panic about. There's nothing to freak out about. It's just the collapse of civilization as we know it. So I've been down here exactly a week now and we've got a three man team down here myself and a guy named Sam and a manager named Will. And when we got here, these big tents, there were, there were many of them here, maybe about 20, but uh, a hurricane came through during the winter, not so long ago, and uh, it just smashed everything. We've had to go through and sort out the poles, replace any bent ones, destroyed canvases on the road there, and you know, we're all ready to go ready to put this thing back together again so that more staff members can come out this coming week and then we can we can really get the thing ready for um, for the schools to come out but now we've just heard from um, like the upper management to just can the whole operation because it's it's all over because of this coronavirus thing I think Spain you can't enter or leave Spain now you can't enter or leave Italy and I think there's a limit on group party sizes that can that can congregate and move about and things like this i haven't paid any attention to the mainstream news media for something like eight or nine years and the thing about it is it's all fear-based and all the reactions that the governments produce and the the experts produce it's all fear-based everything all everything surrounding this coronavirus it's all just fear but look at this you know nature doesn't know about it look at this look how peaceful this place is I don't know about it. I wouldn't know about it if I wasn't working with these guys because I'm unplugged from all of that. I'm not saying my way is better or anything and I'm not saying, hey, look at me, I've got the, got the formula. But every now and then there's something that comes along, some big story and it's like a banking crisis or a terrorist attack or, you know, a virus. And perhaps the virus is the scariest of all because it's a force of nature. And we just don't know how bad it's going to be. We don't know where it's going to stop because usually these viruses come and go and they happen in far-flung places, corners of the world, and this one seems to be different. Since I came to France, I've had very little internet access. This campsite that we're on, I get 10 minutes, 10 minutes a day, free Wi-Fi. Very disconnected, and I'm hearing, like I say, I'm hearing this second-hand information from these guys, and they're closing borders, and I'm thinking, holy shit, you know, I'm going to get back to Avalon, that's not our problem, that's happening on Tuesday. I do have to go through Paris, which might be dangerous, I don't know. I'm not afraid. I think you have to be on the frequency of fear to even be affected by something like this. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that everyone who's been infected with this disease, and especially the people who've died from it, they've succumbed to fear before they succumbed to any virus. And I'm not afraid because I felt it this morning. You know, Sam's got his phone, he's, he's on the news and he's telling me what's happening. He's telling me, this is, this is the story now. And we're just hearing from our managers that you know, we're, we're officially getting the order to pack down and we're gonna be leaving. But I just went outside and I've done the same thing that I've done the last few mornings because it's always been nice like this the last few mornings. I've just sat on the grass with my feet in contact with the soil and I just meditate. The headline news in, in my reality, in my sphere, which is very, very small because I've deliberately disconnected myself from all the chaos and confusion in the world, got enough chaos and confusion going on inside myself. The headline news, the headline story in my body is that there's this, this division that needs to be resolved. The, the division that manifests as inflammation in my skin. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting on the grass and I'm trying to resolve this. But this morning I was sitting there and there are these thoughts coming up like, oh my God, what if we can't get back to Avalon? What if the trains aren't running? What if you can't get through Paris? What if there's no food anywhere? And it's just fear, it's just paranoia. So it's in me too but I just don't listen to it. I don't let those thoughts take over my mind, take over my consciousness and become the dominant thoughts. Yeah, whatever happens, do not let the frequency of fear or doubt or hopelessness, anything like that, do not let it enter your consciousness. You have to be tuned to a certain frequency for it to even be able to manifest in your reality. When it comes to this, coronavirus, carnivorous, whatever they call it. I'm not afraid. I'm gonna get back to Avalon Tuesday and then I'm gonna be basically, I don't know, you know, liaising with, with our friends there and seeing what's going on. 
and I need to find work, see, because I came here to um, help set the camp up and this was going to be about two months work for me. That was going to be a significant chunk of money as well in the bank account so I could get things moving in Avalon. And obviously one of the things I need to do is get our vegetable garden going. Well, that seems to be perhaps even more important now. We're going to see now, or we are seeing, I guess those of you who are plugged into the media and, and you can see what's going on, you're starting to see how fragile this system that we have built and that we have allowed to be built for us. You're starting to see how truly fragile it is, how everything can just be changed in a second by something which is, for want of a better, a better term, it's an act of God. It's an act of nature and it's really going to show all our technology and our, our supply chains and governments and national security. It's really going to show it for what it is, which is, it's a house of cards. Excitement. That's basically how I feel about this. I'm, I'm excited by the possibility of the millions of people who surely are going to wake up because whenever there's a big event like this, you know, whether it's a staged terrorist attack like 9-11 or it's a, it's a virus outbreak, all of these different viruses that come and go, they come and go. And the, the way the media report it and the way that everything that's reported fits into a certain narrative is waking people up all the time. And that is extremely exciting. Look at the beauty, the tranquility, the peace. So yeah, let me know let me know in the comments where you are and what is the situation on the ground where you are, not what is the media telling you is going on a hundred miles from you or in the nearest city to you. What's going on right where you are? Because right here, this is the situation. This is the reality. So let me know what's going on where you are. The bottom line of all of this is do not let fear creep into your mind. This is 2020. Those of us who were plugged in, we knew that this year was going to be special somehow. We're going to see with 2020 vision, we're going to see a lot of illusions, a lot of the illusion of the old structure, which we know must be destroyed one way or the other. And I'm not happy about it. I know it's going to cause a lot of suffering for people. I don't want people to suffer. I do want people to wake up, but I don't want them to suffer. Even though I know that suffering is quite often what causes us to wake up but I know that radical change is needed and I know that the truth needs to come to light and we know that these these massively disruptive so-called natural disasters they they do have a way of waking people up if these guys the water sports guys got to have maybe the second half of their season it wouldn't be a complete disaster if everything went back to normal but it could also get a lot worse and we could have a lockdown the one thing that I care about is Julie She's in London, she's still in London for another two weeks. As it stands, as the guys have told me, that border's not closed yet. Sam, who's the other guy who's working with us, he's driving back, he's getting a ferry, and that means that Julie can still get to France. That's all I care about, that Julie can get to France and get down to Avalon. This is where we're staying. The three of us, the past week, we were meant to be here for another week and then we'd be moving into the tents with the staff when they arrive. That's it from me. I will I'll update again. And, you know, please let me know in the comments where you are and how things are where you are. Take care, everybody. And uh, don't give in to fear.